Hi, in this Taming the Tech video, we're going to take a quick look at how to animate using Google Slides. So I've got a little stick figure that I've created here. I first use the shape uh, of the head, which you can use by doing insert and then shape. And then in shapes, there's a little smiley face there. Um, you can actually make him frown, which is kind of funny. If you wanted to change his emotions, you can do it that way. Just I'm going to leave it smiley face. Uh, anyway. So you've got your shape there. I created a body and two arms out of lines using the line tool. And I changed the thickness to about eight uh, pixels there. And I created the legs out of, oops, sorry. I created the legs out of um, shapes. So I used a rectangle shape. So I'll talk about the rectangle shape in just a second, but I want to show there's a different way to make them look uh, a little bit different. But the process of animating in slides is really the same as it would be if you're animating using drawings or a flip book uh, or claymation where you have multiple um, scenes and in each scene, the character that you're wanting to manipulate moves just a little bit every time. So what we'll do is take our little animation guy here and we'll have him raise his arms um, and legs as if he was jumping in the air and we'll move him up so it'll look like he's actually jumping. So what I'm going to do is have my my solid um, first picture here and then I'm going to duplicate the slide. Not multiple times, just once. And on the second one, I'm going to click each of his arms and I'm going to take the end. You want to make sure that you don't move the whole arm. That's not going to really be what we're looking for. We just want to move the end of the arm. So I'm going to undo that. Make sure I get on the very end and move it just a little bit. Take the other one, move it just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with the legs, but the legs are a little different. You can't grab the end of a shape. What you have to do instead is grab the rotating bar and just turn it a little bit that way. And then you'll probably have to move it some. And do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to rotate it a little bit because it rotates on the center point. So you may have to move your arms and legs around a little bit. I'm not as um, excited about moving shapes around. They're a little bit more difficult. As you can kind of see, I'm trying to master that. So anyway, I'm moving them just a little bit and I'm going to make him go up just a touch. So the way to move the whole body at once is to get your cursor here in the white space someplace and make sure that you have the whole guy um, touched by this blue square you're, you're touching somehow and then move him up just a little bit and you can use your arrow keys if you want um, your arrow key if you click once or up and down will move them quite a bit if you hold the shift key and move it it's a much much smaller movement you can barely see that I'm moving it but that's how that works so that's helpful so if I look between these two now it looks like he's jumping just a little bit so let's add another one and see if we can make it just a little bit higher so I'm gonna move this arm up a little more move this arm up a little more I'm going to move each of these legs up just a touch. Again, we don't want to be too dramatic with our movements because then it doesn't look like uh, there is, uh, or it doesn't, it doesn't flow. You want your movements to be small and controlled. So let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not so bad. And we're going to move him up just a little bit more. So move him up just a little bit. So now, here he is, and he's jumping, and he's back down, and he's jumping, and he's back down. So I could actually duplicate the second slide, drag it down, and duplicate the first slide. Oops, not hide it. We want to duplicate the first slide and move it all the way down. Now we've got him going up and back down, and back up and back down. So now we're doing a little bit of animation. This is great. The next step we want to do is make it look like he is maybe rotating. So let's say... When he jumps in the air, and I'm going to just delete these last three. When he jumps in the air, oops, deleted too many, these last two. Uh, when he jumps in the air, I'm going to have him sort of start to, let's say the wind blows, and he's going to start to move to the right side. So I'm going to duplicate this slide. I'm going to take all of him again, and I'm going to use our little rotating tab here at the, at the top, which is really kind of handy. I'm going to rotate him a little bit. Notice the whole body rotates, even though it's still square, he's rotated. I'm going to move him just a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate, highlight, rotate, and I'm going to move him just a little bit more. Okay, so now when he jumps, he jumps, and oh, the wind is blowing, and I'm going off to the side. So let's say now in our little animation story, he gets blown away from people. We're also going to notice that this is a problem and his emotions are going to start changing. So we're going to make him start to maybe not be so happy with this situation. We'll do the same thing with this one. 
So it kind of you can kind of tell he's not as happy anymore. And as we rotate, he's going to blow away from the scene. So I'm going to duplicate this slide again. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to rotate just a little bit more because again we want to show that motion. But now I'm also going to shrink him. Now it's important, you'll notice I'm dragging from the corners and I can make it any proportion I want, which is not necessarily good. We don't want to make him short and stout or tall and skinny. We want to make sure we keep it the same. So when you click on a corner, hold the shift key and click. Now the proportion stays the same. So I'm going to shrink him just a touch. So I moved him and I shrunk him. But when I shrunk him, I shrunk him down. So I'm going to move him back up a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate that slide, highlight them all. I'm going to rotate him a little bit more. I'm going to shrink him, this time from the bottom. I'm going to move him, highlight him again, sorry. I'm going to move him off to the side. I'm going to do this a couple more times. So duplicate, shrink, rotate there. I'm going to shrink him a little bit more, shrink from this corner. Move him off to the side. I'm going to duplicate again, highlight, rotate, shrink shrink them down maybe make them a little bit more frowny so there's lots that we can do with this character as we are animating so now let's take a look from the beginning here he is jumping oh winds coming and now he's blowing away so again you've got a lot of options for animation and it's just simply changing sizes changing shapes changing what angles the the lines have and you can get as complicated or as simple as you want so in this second animation over here I've got an airplane uh, with a cloud background and all I've done is taken this is just a PNG it's a uh, transparent image of an airplane and I just simply made it bigger and come towards the screen so now when I animate you can see the airplane there it goes and it flies by all right so if I'm looking at it in presentation view again same idea uh, and again this would be the way you'd want your students to display it so we can watch the animation happen oh it's backwards let's go back to the end so here goes my airplane when he flies by so again animation can be fun you can have students tell stories with it you can have uh, them create their own scenes uh, and in the next video we'll take a look at how to take all of these images and turn them into a gif uh, which will be sort of a rotating image and maybe they can you know create their own memes using their animation so we'll take a look in the next video thanks for watching